Welcome to Papillion Unscripted. I'm Michael Severe, the place to go to hear from people who truly help make Papillion feel like home. Joining us this week is the events and Sumter Amphitheater manager, Doug Huggins, joining us here. We appreciate it. And, and other titles as assigned. Uh, correct. <laughs> yes. Well, basically, whatever the city uh, requests of me, I'm happy to do. You're happy to so, do it. Where yes, Where'd you grow up? Um, originally, uh, I was from a military family. My dad was a military pilot. Uh, we were uh, stationed in the Pacific Northwest, mostly mm -hmm. uh, Washington State. Uh, grew up in Montana for a fair amount of time mm -hmm. and uh, graduated high school and went to college uh, back in Washington State. And you got to Nebraska via the military? Correct. I was a musician. Um, I was a bassoon player and a music education major. Uh, did not feel the call to teach, uh -huh. but had an opportunity to join the United States Air Force as surprisingly as a bassoonist with back then the Strategic Air Command Band. I always tell kids they think the military is just about going to war. There's a lot of jobs. There are. <laughs> it's it, the the military is really big, uh, just like the city of Papillion. Yes. It's you. We have our figureheads. We have the mayor. We have the city administrator. But you know, just like the Air Force, they have the pilots. But it takes a huge organization mm -hmm. to support all that and all of those jobs, uh, either both in a military situation or a local government situation. Are, are important, are just as important as anybody else's. So it takes a village to run a military and, and the Air Force Band's part mm -hmm. was as a tool to, uh, to what they called influencing hearts and minds. Yeah, so it's esprit de corps. Exactly, yeah. uh, and, and it's, it's getting your, your taxpayer base um, to, to understand what the military is about. Because we, when we were stationed here at Offutt, we had a geographic area. So we'd be going to Fargo, North Dakota. Mm. We'd be going to, to uh, Rapid City, South Dakota. We'd be playing in all places in Nebraska and Iowa. And we were the face of the United States Air Force. Mm -hmm. um, we would go in and we would talk and, and our, our spiel was, uh, which we all believed is the excellence that you see on this stage represents the excellence of the United States Air Force and the United States military. Mm -hmm. And it's it's great that we get to, I still get to participate in that mm -hmm. because we strive for that same attitude at Sumter, at uh, the Chrysalis Event Center and the Recreation Department as a whole. Mm -hmm. How long were you at Offutt before you uh, retired? I did 11 years at Offutt, then I was in Europe for four years, mm -hmm. went to Colorado Springs for six years, and mm -hmm. then came back here to retire, and I retired in 2005. You retired, and like I think about a dozen people that work for the city, you came back and your second career City of Papillion. Correct. As a part-timer though first, right? As a part-timer, I, I was doing some independent uh, producing and, and technical directing still for, for military uh, bands, working for a local company in Ralston called Theatrical Media Services. Mm -hmm. um, and they were very strong uh, uh, supporters of, of the community and the Air Force. So we kept a, uh, I got to, to keep a relationship with, uh, with the military through theatrical media services, but I was living here in Papillion mm -hmm. at the time. And I came across Sumter Amphitheater and was like, wow, this is a gem. This is absolutely amazing. And uh, through uh, contacts uh, with, the, with the recreation director and the manager at the time, uh, she was like, hey, we're looking for somebody that knows something about tech, that mm -hmm. knows something about entertainment, because at the time the rec department knew about rec. Right. And so she asked me to come on part-time, and it was myself and one other person who is currently the communications director Never heard of, him. of uh, the city of Papillion, Trent and Albers. We were running uh, Sumter Amphitheater day-to-day operations. Just a couple of kids. Just a couple of kids. <laughs> yep. So uh, it was a learning experience for both of us, mm -hmm. and uh, it, Trent moved on to bigger better things and well, you became the, the manager of the facility I got really lucky, lucky yes you I did. was blessed I, I could not have asked for a better uh, second career and yeah. for a better company to work for than than the city of Papillion to be able to do what I do you used a great word it's it's kind of a hidden gem in a way the amphitheater not a lot of people in the metro don't know it's there then they go to some random event. It may be a concert, it may be a movie on a Friday or a Saturday night, but talk about the variety of things you guys offer there. The Sumter is, we, we do a wide variety, as you said, we do, we do some ticketed events, mm -hmm. we do rentals, we do a lot of recreational programming. Right. And that's what we pretty much started out doing, is uh, I came on about the same time that Mayor Black came on. 
and it was very important to him, routed through the Recreation Department, that we are a resource, a community resource, that we are providing arts and entertainment to uh, the city, the residents of the city of Papillion as a whole, mm -hmm. and also the, and therefore the Omaha metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. So we were very focused on doing local programming, Papillion area concert bands, Serpy yeah. Serenaders, doing Thursday night concerts of local bands, and those were all free and open to the public. We do seven free movies during during the season. Um, and they're kids' movies. They're usually the latest kids' movies. Yeah. Um, we got involved with some promoters back in probably about four years after I started, and they started bringing us uh, national touring acts. Um, it was It's a fascinating business to be in, but it's a very fluctuating business to be in. Uh, we just, we did uh, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band just yeah. uh, uh, last year, and or th th this previous season. Right now we don't have any on the books, uh, but those hopefully shall be coming, but um, we've got a lot of new venues in town that are coming coming up. So yeah, it's one day we can be doing a community concert, next day we can be doing a wedding. Like this weekend we're doing a, uh, really? a thing with Beyond All Stars. It's a okay. cheerleading exposition hmm. that they come in, they set up their cheerleading mats and do, it's, it's kind of their end of year uh, show off of everything that they've That's done cool. over the years. So it's it, it's never the same right. twice. I did a, uh, a Explore Downtown on Papillion House of Music, mm -hmm. and they had little concerts for their musicians, given the chance the first time to be up on a stage mm -hmm. in front of a crowd, perform with other um, people who are also doing music. Uh, it's such a it's, a it's a cool facility to have for those young people to be able to say, I was up on that stage. Correct, and we've worked very closely with Papillion House of Music. Um, they are, all their instructors are local musicians that we've had on stage play. Right. A lot of their students, and with my background in music education, it's very important for me to be able to offer that up as an experience for those kids. When they come out and they see there's a couple hundred people in the audience, there's a big PA system, the lights, there's, there's a good sized lighting system yeah. that gives them a real taste That's of awesome. what uh, being a musician is and, and can be and maybe that sparks a fire under somebody's, uh, you know, somebody's creativity process. I think I know the answer to this. What's the most popular movie that you've shown? <laughs> Frozen. Is it Frozen? I gotta <laughs> figure that. I was thinking either Moana or Frozen. One of those two movies are just huge with the kids. It was the largest audience that we have had in Sumter Amphitheater at really? all the time. Yeah, we did. We're, we're wow. officially uh, capacitied at 2,500, and I, I think we had 20, 2,350 people in there. Willie Nelson came to town. We only had 2,200 <laughs> for Willie Nelson. So that was a neat frozen. thing. And the, 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 the really neat thing is we, we did, that for that show, we had uh, Papillion House of Music open up for the movie. Oh. And there was, a, it was a, a, this really neat uh, all-girl band that uh, that were students and they were kind of up and coming and really excited, but for them to come out on stage and see two thousand wow. plus people yeah. up on that hillside is just the look on their face and the delight that they had was it's it just amazing. We mentioned other duties as assigned. You also over at Papillion Landing, mm -hmm. Crystal's room. I don't know if people understand how many nights and days are booked in that room for different events as well. We're we're uh, yeah we're 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 getting more popular. Yeah. We're trying to figure out exactly what we need to be. Uh, just like w at Sumter Amphitheater, we we are, we learned quickly where we could go and how we could use those, uh, as I refer to them as resources, um, for the public, for the city of Papillion. Um, and we've got some, some neat spaces that we have the opportunity to rent from the classroom size all the way up to our community gymnasium right. that we can turn into a ballroom. Uh, we've got some neat. Um, we've got some neat technology in our our regular ballroom, and we can split that into three separate rooms. Um, yeah, you have a camera setup that we use for the city council. Correct. Members. Yes, and then that's also available for uh, for for rental. So if we have a company that wants to come in and do some offsite that we all got used to working on Zoom, right. uh, we pretty much put that in during the pandemic, and uh, it is available for use. So companies say. 
uh, you know, one of the one of the local coffee companies wants to come in and do a nationwide meeting with mm -hmm. their folks is we can turn on some zoom cameras for them wow. and see it on the screen we've got audio vi uh, video capabilities it's a it's a neat space and we invite the uh, uh, the community to to reach out to us and uh, see what we have to offer going back to Sumter pick the concert that was most exciting for you. I know the Air Force Band must be kind of cool being that you were around that, but what's the what's the one that was most exciting for you? Probably Willie Nelson. Um, I, I've always been a huge Willie Nelson fan. Yeah. And uh, I ate at Denny's with him once. Did you? Right across the street from his, uh, so he has a whole saloon there in Houston, actually spring, and uh, he came over after performing a little bit and sat in Denny's and we all Eight with Willie Nelson, and he's just a he's just a just regular a down, guy, isn't down, he? Just a down, down, yeah. Yep. And he answered any question people had. Absolutely. Took pictures. This is before you had cell phones. People actually had like had to go run to Walmart, Walgreens, come back, and use the little cameras to take pictures <laughs> with him. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> Willie Nelson was really amazing because he was uh, he was supposed to be on with the headliner. I can't remember who it was, um, but the the headliner had passed away a couple weeks prior. Oh no! And um, so they put Chris Christopherson oh, wow. on the bill. So that's you, amazing. You had the highway man. You had two <laughs> of the remaining living highwaymen. That's so cool. On 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 stage. Um, so he had Chris Christopherson opening for him, and that was just absolutely amazing. Willie Nelson's bus pulled in. Willie to the point to where he doesn't have to come in, and he's got people to set up. Right, he's right, got right. people to hand him a guitar. And so his bus comes in about halfway through uh, Chris Christopherson's set. Mm -hmm. um, we had somebody from Farm Aid, which Willie was a very instrumental yeah. in, in putting Farm Aid together. Somebody was retiring from the original Farm Aid crew, so I had to escort somebody back to uh, to get a guitar signed for for the retirement, mm -hmm. so I got an opportunity to to nice. meet Willie and uh, and chat with him just real shortly. He goes on stage, he plays, he gets done, gets back on his bus. His band ends as soon as the band gets done. Willie's bus is pulling out. Is pulling out. He it's like clockwork. <laughs> if you're Willie Nelson, you can do that. But right. boy, he sang "Crazy" uh, is one of my favorite songs uh -huh, in yeah, the it's whole great wide song. world. Yeah. And him singing crazy on stage, it, it brought a tear to my eye. It was just like, uh, when I started at Sumter Amphitheater, we're a community concert band venue. Mm -hmm. We're a small community venue. We do not have a lot of the infrastructure for a lot of the, the big rock and roll tours. Mm -hmm. Willie Nelson is uh, stretching uh, our boundaries of what we were able to do, but we took it on as a challenge as the city and said, hey, how do we figure out to do these large ticketed events and can we really do it? Mm -hmm. And then once Willie Nelson was on stage, it was like, okay, great, mission complete, we can do this. What's next for the Sumter Amphitheater? What can, mm -hmm. what, what, what bigger, better, or more uh, important things can we do for the, for the community and the greater uh, Omaha area? Last thing I always ask this question of everyone, um, as someone who's lived in this area for a while now, is there something that you, it doesn't get highlighted enough. Is there a, an event or a place that you would like to say, hey, we need to put an eye on this, something you want to Overall, the Papillion Recreation Department. Um, that's who I work for, mm -hmm. and both at Papillion Landing and Sumter Amphitheater. Um, I, I highly encourage uh, citizens of Papillion and, the, again, the, the general Omaha area, come see us. Come take a look at what we have to offer because it's not just youth sports leagues that we're putting on. Right. We've got adult programming. Uh, keep an eye on our websites. Keep an eye on, on, on Sumter Amphitheater. Come visit us at uh, Papio Bay. Uh, come see our parks mm -hmm. because those are just like I say Sumter Amphitheater is a hidden gem. So are our parks. So are our services. Right. So is our recreation department. So come see us and uh, and check us out. Uh, keep an eye on what we have to offer. Shout out to Tracy and Tim. They, they do an absolutely do fantastic job. job. Yeah. They're great per people to work with. Doug, we appreciate it, man. Thank Thanks you very much for your time. Awesome. And I really appreciate how Sumter leans into the military aspect. Obviously, you have a connection, our area has a connection, but there's so many little events that highlight the military. And Absolutely, awesome. and, and more are coming with uh, with the addition of the Vietnam Vets Memorial. There's, we're very excited to have that in, you know, just adjacent to our grounds. It's gonna be a cool area. Absolutely. Thanks, Doug. Thanks for your time. Join us again next time when we again speak with someone who helped make Papillion feel like home. <laughs>